saw in the discussion yesterday that storm pushing into the northwest coast with the rains from far northern California uh, in through coastal Washington, Oregon, and beginning to spread into northern Idaho and Montana as well. That cloud shield was enhanced yesterday here in Colorado because of all the chemtrails, and that was a statewide event that impacted even the surrounding states as the storm pushed inland. And now as we are deeper into the storm, there's a nice little V there, we have got... Uh, what, what are we tending to call the wall of clouds? Now, piling up against the song grace, our 14,000 foot, peak, foot peak systems almost to 14.3, Challenger Peak, and then the lenticulars, these much more, I won't say they're wholly natural, but they look much more natural than how they were appearing yesterday. We can still see the, cl the cross angles, and we'll see this on time lapse. I've got that running now, so we'll have a look at that uh, at the end. But it's the tra these trails. As the atmosphere is compressed at this latitude uh, over these huge peaks, you know, running the whole spine of this part of the Rockies, uh, we're compressing the atmosphere. The midway point of the atmosphere, pressure-wise, is about 18,000 feet. These peaks are, are generally between 12 and 14,000 feet. So we're compressing the atmosphere. All of it has to pass over these mountains and through this, this constricted part of, of the sky. And so it's like uh, forcing a river that was a mile wide to move through a gorge that's just a half a mile wide. And when you put steering mechanisms in or guide wires, then you can greatly impact how the air squirts over, squirts through, emerges from, however you want to phrase it, this part of the country. And so this is one of the reasons why there is such vast engineering consistently over Colorado, over Wyoming, and especially with an inbound storm. Kind of losing some of the definition because of the, the thickening stratocirrus overhead, the definition of, of uh, the, the trails. But we've just had a, a series of smaller ones outlining this other larger primary trail on two and three. And uh, there's another one's just kind of emerging here. Let me see if I can't zoom in. We can snag this guy. All right, so here he is. He's trailing. That's the uh, United Continental Flight. And what they have been interested in, so he's in the midst of another trail. He passed through the bottom of that one there. There's been this point over in here where we've had a cross, a cross mark. And then the trail has spread. It's kind of like it's had a thumbprint from above. And then that marked it. But it's how all these will deform. And then other planes come along and find geometric locations, uh, tangents uh, to, to bisect. To uh, Tangents are a huge one. Uh, to cross these other previously created trails. And then we have the clouds overhead. My question is... And the models have our chances of rain at sub 10%. So will we get anything out of all this? Or is this just going to be another uh, dance in the sky for the planes? So the question is, uh, did these flight tracker software programs work? This one is not. This is supposed to be a Delta. And it is a Delta. 737-800. But it's not supposed to be at this place. It's supposed to be to the south, not to the north. But he's came trailing. And he is on flight tracker. He is came trailing. The trail sticking, it intersects this lower one, they come together at this point. And if we're kind of looking in there closely, we've got some rippling. You can see where the clouds have got some rippling. So where it punctures the center of that rippling, the two trails, that's where the trails fade away. There's not a whole lot to share with you on this day. Have our uh, 
halo around the sun. 22 degree width on the circle, 22 degrees. But we're in this uh, not totally dense overcast, but it's certainly enough to really knock out seeing any trails from above. The definition of the lenticulars that had been along the mountains earlier in the morning is, is all gone. As that has been lost, I'm still running the time lapse. But otherwise, there's just not a lot to look at. We should get a break in the clouds that's coming in from the southwest. And if that happens, it's about 1.30 now, that won't happen until 3 or 4, and then that gives us maybe 90 minutes prior to sunset to look at the sky. But otherwise, it's kind of gone blah as we end up with this uh, rapidly thickening cirrus deck as it begins to eke down into the lower... It, well, it's certainly in the mid-levels now, uh, which would be, uh, you know, say 12 to twelve to 18,000 feet. That's about it, for, about it for outside. Oh goody, I'm ready for some blue skies and something else to look at. All right, everybody, let's start with a look at the radar. We're headed towards the latter part of the afternoon, 6.20 p.m. is the last scan of the radar. Uh, I typically use WeatherTap for a lot of my stuff. And uh, still seeing some showers persisting across New England, some uh, light rains from uh, Boston, northward to not quite Kennebone, Port Maine, and some through Jersey, the Delmarva Peninsula. See these spikes? This is sunset. This is the radar actually picking up the returns of the electromagnetic energy from the sun. So you see these spikes march across the country uh, as we see the sunset terminator. Uh, work across the country as well. Some light rains as we move out towards the east. Let's uh, throw in a winter mosaic and see if that changes the uh, the compo com uh, composure of the showers. And you can see, yes, we've got some snows and some mixed precipitation across the Adir Adirondacks, Catskills, probably moving into Pittsfield, Mass, and then through uh, uh, New England later on tomorrow, and also some activity uh, through Minnesota. If we pop over and take a look at the national image, if I can find that over on the side of the screen, much of what we see through the upper Midwest, the Dakotas and Minnesota, is also of the frozen variety. And then a few showers persisting along the West Coast. To the big picture, this is the trough responsible for the cool weather and still has the remnants of Sandy entrained therein. That blocking ridge, which is so often the case, whether it's a drought for weeks and months on end or a long-term flood event like Sandy, these blocks are present and those are exceedingly easy to engineer. I can make that very clear clear they're very easy to engineer. If you put in a dam, the water has nowhere to go. It's simple. Uh, an impulse, this is the one responsible for the snows across uh, Minnesota and North Dakota, and then the uh, Gulf of Alaska vortex in place, and that was Friday morning. These uh, models are run at 12-hour intervals, at least those that I'm going to show you. The slow still sits off the west coast, and impulse coming in or continues across the Dakotas. What I want to pop to now are temperatures. This is going to go to probably noontime. And this first top digit is the temperature. The bottom number is the dew point. We've got a cold front north through northern Alaska. Some snows at uh, Point Barrow, Anchorage, and Fairbanks. Not Anchorage, but Fairbanks is sub-zero. There is a lot of cold across the Yukons and Northwest Territory. Single digits and even temperatures sub-zero. That big storm south of the Gulf of Alaska remains in place and is going to be a slow mover with the front approaching the west coast. Temperatures inland, uh, eastern Idaho, mid-40s, low-50s. Same story for Nevada. And then the developing storm across Kansas uh, as we begin to see some warmer air, some 80s and 70s with dew points, dew point being the lower number, so 82 over 54, 54 being the dew point. I'm here with the front in place and the obscured cloud cover on this particular day. And then as we look towards New England, we still have the remnants of a couple of different lows kind of just uh, pinwheeling around, but the flow has generally gone northerly and is beginning to dry out this time Albany running 47 over over 35 uh, as we get towards sunset. A little bit warmer to the south where we've got 70s into Georgia and still 70s across Florida. So back to the forecast. Back to Saturday morning. Unsettled across the upper Midwest. Still some lingering uh, energy through uh, New England, but largely that flow has gone northerly and that is typically a dry flow. This guy is going to swing to the south. This Impulse, however, because it's crested this ridge out west, is going to be energized as it drops into the mean long wave position. So now we have two storms. This is still the one that has 
entrained sandy. The west is gorgeous with a ridge of high pressure off California. That ridge remains in place. And this guy is deepening every single model run I've been looking at this day uh, over this week. This thing has strengthened. This swinging out, this goes negatively tilted. This tends to energize the storms. And who knows where this is going to be. This is uh, uh, two days after the election. This may be an off-coastal event, or they may pull it ashore, and that could have an issue with uh, the cleanup effects along the northeastern seaboard. And then this might finally bring some rains into Southern California, but that's not going to be till the latter part of, of next week. Satellite imagery. I'm underneath this cloud cover, and we have not had a whole lot to look at. It's been, it's been boring. It's been ugly. There were lots of thick trails uh, earlier today. Here is the range of mountains that I'm banked up next to, so you can see the clouds a little bit brighter there. I want to uh, ship on east. This was this morning over the Carolinas, and there were just some very unusual clouds. If you were in Virginia, northern North Carolina, out towards Asheville, north of Char Charlotte, Raleigh, I'd be interested to see what those clouds looked like. And then, of course, the thick, thick, thick trails from, uh, say, uh, Muskogee, McAllister, Oklahoma, Tulsa, northward through, through uh, Wichita, uh, Lawrence, Topeka, on up into Omaha. There were some thick trails in that direction. And then uh, the larger picture out west, here's the showers. And I want to go back to a more recent shot. This is towards the sunset. It's the sunset terminators working across. You can see the trails in the clouds across Iowa. All of these holes, all of this geometry, it's very difficult to see from below, to decipher what they're doing. But when we can look at the high-resolution satellite imagery, the structure, the shaping of the clouds, None of this can be driven by regular thermodynamics. There's another force in here grabbing these clouds, curling them, twisting them, and turning them into, into funky shapes, into very, very unusual shapes. Off to the south, and here's the trails that are still in Oklahoma. So there could be some incredible sunset shots from Tulsa, from Fort Smith, from Joplin, from Columbia South, uh, from uh, Columbia, Missouri, on up into Topeka, Hayes, Russell, uh, Grand Junction, uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, but to Great Bend, Kansas. So those could be some fascinating pictures that I would be very interested in looking at. Here's a 24 image loop of the visible imagery and the date and timestamp there. And all the trails across New Mexico, southern Colorado, across Kansas, Missouri, and now into Arkansas. The high pressure under here. They love to work the periphery. They love to work where the high pressure interfaces with the weather. This is their favorite area. And as I said earlier, it's easy for them to build blocks. These high pressures are their favorite places to work. So where we would have had blue skies, we just do not any longer. Here's our timestamp. We are looking at uh, water vapor for the North Pacific. And I'm going to throw in a little animation, well, some, some, some contrast. Alaska, the Aleutians, all the trails. Leaving the coast of Siberia. That far away, they're already working the jet stream. So Russia is aware. The Soviet, former Soviet Union has to be aware that these aircraft are doing something with the weather. And then more trails approach at the coast. These not as pronounced. I shared a picture on my Facebook page uh, this morning as we were dealing with a thick panopy of uh, zero stratus clouds overhead this morning with some stunning lenticulars over the song grace just off to the east, plus a regular dose of what were incredibly thick uh, chemtrails. Here's the song race to the east, but this, these two things are what caught my attention. And there's a hole here, hole here, hole here, hole here, and it goes on. So we have high five holes essentially in a straight line. And then more trails as we move down into northern Mexico. This was 10, 10 a.m. mountain time. And so just another example of the very fine scale 
geometry that's manifest that would be impossible to see from, from aircraft or difficult to see from aircraft because you couldn't get far enough back to see uh, the shape or the forest for the trees. And then from below it's difficult as well. It's only from space that you're going to pick up this kind and see this kind of resonance geometry. If you've got great pictures to share, share them, post them on the wall. Short videos are fabulous. I like to have those added on so we can share your observations and what you see uh, with me and, and the world because it is just about time we got this message to a global audience. Thanks for watching everybody. Keep looking up. Those guys here in Southern Colorado never really did clear off. This uh, gray canopy of clouds just persisted and from time to time was showing a little bit of texture. Um, that's probably the sun right there. And then there were a few trails. There might be some that ride in there as we look off to the north. But it's just kind of been this nondescript blah day and certainly not one that's terribly exciting for me where uh, it's about as exciting as a perfectly blue sky day which uh, I, I don't mind now and again, but you know, I'm, I'm a weather guy. I like a little bit of activity. And uh, so we've just kind of been stuck in this mess. No lenticulars, we shouldn't have had the ones that were there this morning, those shouldn't have been there in the first place. And so uh, that's about it. Did a little weather discussion, look at that. Still a little stripe of a trail that's overhead, so they're going on. And if we hear something or see something over the next little bit, I'll include it. Otherwise, we're into the second day of November. As things wind down, the northeast begins to wind down. Little showers back east. And the potential for a nor'easter type of storm, as we pointed out on the map discussion. But right now, it looks like that'll sh stay offshore. Although there was a time when Sandy looked like she would stay offshore. And we all know how that ended up. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching.